everything is uh, smooth. So this, uh, yes, this panel, the, the status of the different systems which are all involved in the uh, synchronized sequence and uh, for which uh, they have to be uh, ready at the same time, at the same moment to allow the, the launch. And these include the launch base, the launcher, the satellites, in this case the ATV, Jules Verne. Basically all the systems across this very big uh, space base, Europe's spaceport, the, all these systems uh, summarized by the green status panels coming into Jupiter here, which is why we call Jupiter the nerve center of the whole thing. The DDO, Thierry Vallée, again, you'll hear him call out the one-minute mark in just a moment, and we'll be into the final 60 seconds. À tous de dire attention pour moins une minute. Are you going to go out and see the show? I go and see the show. Al Alex is going to step outside. Top H0, moins une minute. See you later. Alex is going out to... Uh, the terrace, there are two terraces on either side of us here, the folks, the invited guests are going out now and he's going to watch the launch and come back and he'll give us his impressions live. In the meantime, keep your eyes open for the final ignition sequence. You'll hear the DDO call out uh, 3, 2, 1 uh, ignition and you'll see the main engine light up and then count to 7 because during those 7 seconds the computers that we've been talking about will be checking out pressure and temperature and if they find everything alright then they'll give the order to light the boosters, those are the ones on the side there and uh, then we'll be off. So we'll let the DDO call out the final 10 seconds and we'll let you enjoy the liftoff and we'll be back with you after Ariane has cleared the tower. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcain, allumage des EAP et décollage. Sky over Kourou here, always an impressive sight. 775 tons lifting off. The DDO is saying that everything is okay on board. Alex has just come rushing in. You look very pleased of what you've seen. How was it out there? Uh, that was absolutely terrific. It was a marvelous show. The light and sound were absolutely impressive. What impressed you most? Uh, I think the, the, the sound, but it comes a little bit later, but the sound is really impressive. It's not the first time you've seen a launch. No, it's not the first time, but each time it's a little bit like the first time. All right, sounds, sounds exciting. I'll go out next time. So we are now uh, in flight. So from now on, we shall leave the green panel and follow the launcher's health status on this little graphic that you can see on the upper left on the screen. Now, what is that? That's uh, the real trajectory and the optimum. Yes, the, well, the curve represents a computed simulation of the whole trajectory and the white spot on the curve represents the actual position of the launcher which permanently sends a telemetry signal to the radars of the ground stations. And on the bottom left, A and V on the bottom is altitude and... Other indication of the velocity and altitude are real-time data. And also the, the angle between the launcher's antenna and the uh, ground stations. All right, we are into the first powered flight phase, which is the two boosters and the main engine, and you saw the lights uh, before we lost Ariane to the cloud cover. The boosters will be burning for another 20 seconds or so. Uh, the Vulcan engine will operate uh, for about eight minutes before it's shut down. And at this point, at an altitude of around 145 kilometers, the main stage will separate and follow a side ballistic trajectory before re-entering the atmosphere and fall down into the ocean. There is the separation of the two solid boosters. This is what it looks like up there. The camera's not on board tonight. This is a camera shot from a flight last year. But you see, you can see one of the boosters, both of them, one on the other side, dropping yeah. into the ocean. And then what happens? Yeah, they are approximately 450 kilometers off the launch site of the coast of Kourou. We're now into the second flight phase, the EPC, or the core stage, the core cryogenic stage is burning alone. It'll burn, as Alex said, for just under 10 minutes. Pushing air again, again across the Atlantic. Well, a short time before the fairing separation. 
Fairing separation will be next up. You'll hear the DDO call out that milestone. And those, the, the separation of the booster and the fairing, all done by more or less the same systems, am I right, as pyrotechnic cords? Absolutely, all the same systems, like the ones we used on Ariane 4. There the DDO has called out the separation of the fairing, and you'll get a shot of that. So we are on time. Coming and up. now, now there's just one half of uh, actually there's two halves that are blown, blown away into the fairing, and they also fall into the Atlantic. How how much weight have we lost there? Uh, we've lost about 2.5 tons, and the launcher has now lost approximately 70 percent of its total weight. Remember, 70, 775 tons at liftoff, and then we lose all the fuel in the uh, boosters, and the fuel rapidly being burnt up in the core stage. You saw the launch site man manager. Mr. Sikar a moment ago. You can hear from him now on the launcher campaign. Take a look. The launch campaign for this flight, Flight 181, began at the end of last year and lasted throughout January. First, we integrated the two solid boosters in the main cryogenic stage. On this version, these stages are identical to those on an Ariane 5 ECA, in other words, with a Vulcan 2 engine on the cryogenic stage. The storable propellant upper stage was then mated, and it is on this stage and on the vehicle equipment bay that there are a number of specific adaptations. The vehicle equipment bay structure has been reinforced to cope with the mass of the ATV. Following integration, the launcher was transferred to the final assembly building. Two days later, we began the combined operations plan for the two-phase ATV to launcher mating. The first phase concerned what we call the SDC, which is the launcher interface cylinder. And during the second phase, the ATV was integrated onto the mechanical interface. We hold status meetings at 5 p.m. every evening here in this room, where the entire team reviews the different operations that have been carried out that day and those scheduled for the next day. Following a number of checks, the fairing was integrated onto the ATV. Upon completion of the final preparations, we hold what we call the launch readiness review. This is an important meeting at which authorization is given for the launcher to be rolled out to the launch zone. The different industries, the design authority, the technical authority, and the operational teams all attend this meeting, together with the Arian Technical Committee. It is this Arian Technical Committee that gives the green light for the launch vehicle to be rolled out to the launch zone. On the launcher's side, everything's fine. We have a good altitude and good velocity. Two minutes left in the core stage, the EPC burn extinction of the lower stage due to come at about eight minutes, exactly eight minutes and 55 seconds. We're going to hear now from Philippe Roland. You can see him in the blue shirt there, the Air and Space Mission Director on the ATV campaign. <laughs> The ATV spacecraft arrived in French Guiana in late July on board the Iran space ship. Its three separate parts had to be assembled gradually over the first five months of the campaign, from August to November. The spacecraft comprises the solar panels shipped separately, the upper part of cargo, which after preparation will carry all the supplies for the ISS, and the lower part which contains most of the propellant needed to reach the station. The ATV will modify the position of the ISS by roughly 80 kilometers, thus giving it around three years of autonomy.
Au mois de décembre, entre Between Noël Christmas et le nouveau an, nous avons commencé les opérations ATV fueling, qui ont duré jusqu'à la fin de la janvier. Les finales préparations ont commencé en mi-février. La protection thermique et la thermique a été installée et le satellite a été transféré à la base, où il a été mis sur le lanceur et le ferry a été mis en place. Le vol va être réalisé dans le cadre de la mission de l'ATV Fueling Mission Impossible. Le flight va être relativement long, lasting plus de 60 minutes avant la séparation et le lanceur de l'avion va être traqué par un réseau de stations. Je tiens à remercier les équipes internationales qui ont travaillé sur le programme de l'ATV Fueling Mission Impossible. The ATV program over seven months. It is thanks to them that Europe's spaceport will henceforth be seen as the departure point for the International Space Station.